On our final visit to Cyprus's Turkish-occupied side, we once again passed through the Veringa checkpoint and entered the outskirts of Amogostos. I must also say that we don't fully support the opening of the checkpoints. This legitimizes the occupied side as a legitimate country. Having said that, at the very least, it allows us to film and show you all these forgotten places. Amogostos was once the tourist capital of Cyprus, but after the 1974 invasion, it was abandoned entirely and today is a ghost town. Its outskirts are inhabited though. After passing through Amogostos, we went to the village of Tricomo, where my sister's godfather is from. We found the church of St. George and Park to visit it. There we met two very kind Turkish Cypriots. The woman, whose name was Hava, could speak very good Cypriot Greek. <laughs> it seems she has friends on the free side. They were very kind to us and pleased to help us and tell us about other churches in the village that are worth visiting. <laughs> <laughs> Not everyone is this kind in the north, so it was a welcomed encounter. <laughs> It seems that this church is somehow connected to the local dance group. Whether they use the actual church to practice or the area around it, I couldn't tell you. It was closed and my father called his cumbaro, my sister's godfather, to ask him for information about the village and the churches there. Next, in the center of the village of Tricomo, we saw the Church of St. James, built between the 15th and 16th centuries. But what we found inside left us speechless. It has been transformed into a tourist office for foreigners who want to come to the occupied side. I genuinely have no words for this. I leave it to speak for itself.
Then we stopped by an ancient church, which is an icon museum today. Unfortunately, it was closed. Here are some photos of the frescoes. There seem to be some beautiful Romaic, or Byzantine, frescoes inside. We were told that it was closed during COVID and remained that way. We admired the architecture and left. We then headed north to the coastline of Kerinya. Our first stop was the village of Akanthu. Here we found a church that had been turned into a mosque. Originally, it was called Chrysosotiros and was dedicated to the transfiguration of the Savior. We didn't dare enter without permission, but much to our surprise, they gestured for us to come in. We kept our shoes on and did not step on the carpet. Muslims must take off their shoes when walking in a mosque. They never said a word to us, and we just observed for a few moments before leaving. I believe that due to Father's priestly appearance, they respected that this had once been a Christian temple. It was odd to see a mosque with crosses for windows. This church was once very famous throughout the region for its beauty. This village is dated to Eastern Roman times and was inhabited between the 7th and 10th centuries. The residents were Orthodox Christians until 1974. We took a few minutes to take in this once Christian temple and village and departed Akanthu. After Akanthu, we went to the village known as Agios Ambrosios. It should be noted that all these villages, including Marathovunos, have new names now. For our documentary, we will use the original names. It seems that this village has also converted the church into a mosque. We didn't enter this one and instead left Aigios Ambrosios and set out to the monastery of Antifonitis.
This small and secluded monastery dates to the 12th century, the end of the Eastern Roman period on the island of Cyprus. It took us about 20 or so minutes to reach it by car. I, I climbed from up here to get in. I jumped down. Unfortunately, we weren't able to enter the monastery church. The frescoes inside are exceptional. They are of the beautiful Cypriot style, vibrant in color, and clearly made by skillful hands. Some icons and frescoes were stolen after the invasion, and some were returned to the Cypriot church in 2013. We left filled with sorrow that such an extraordinary place was not inhabited by monks. Its secluded and somewhat isolated location is perfect for a monastic community. The final visit of this day and of our journey in the occupied side of Cyprus would be a small church in the village of Biyi. On the walls of the church were blasphemous symbols and profane words. The rest speaks for itself. Hopefully the holy relics that were in the altar table were removed before the Turks moved in.